Well, hey there, my lovely Rosa Monkeys. I am happy you're here once again. I hope you enjoyed the last little cultural exchange video we had with Sumomo's video. But now it's time to return to our regularly scheduled programming language. This is the last video for the Chobits mini series that I am doing. You guys have been really patient and I want to thank you all for it. I had surgery a month ago, but now I am fully recovered and back to my regular activities, hence why the video took a while <laughs> to get out. And I'm really sorry for that. Um, I blame my body for, uh, you know, having a downtime, you know, healing and stuff. And if you want to know what all that was about, you can head on over to the community tab. I went in there and left a little post explaining the situation. So if you're not up to date and if you want to know what that was all about, head on over there. Our next contestant in this miniseries is none other than Freya. Now, a lot of people kind of know her by the name uh, Dark Chi or Black Chi. Uh, yeah, no, her real name is Freya and she is the twin sister of Chi in the series. While she had very, very mysterious appearances throughout the series, she is a pivotal character in Chi's story. So what better way to pay homage to this mysterious and very cool character than making a video for her, <laughs> like the rest of them. Plus, I only had these three figures in my collection from Chobit, so might as well get on with it and finish them all. Now, before we start, I want to point out that I am renewing my Twitch streams because, again, I've, I had been in recovery and I am back. So you can join me over on my Twitch channel and you have uh, more of an opportunity to talk with me one on one because not a lot of people go and visit me while I live stream. So it's your chance to have a really, really nice conversation or not, maybe with me. I don't know. I mean, just people go in there and, and go in for the tea because I tend to spill a lot of it over there. I also want to point out that my channel now has the membership enabled for all of you that wish to support my work even further. I have special perks for those of you that decide to become a member, so be sure and check out that little option for your enjoyment. If not, you still have the super thanks button option available as well. And why not my Patreon? Yes, I am plugging my Patreon here because I actually post a lot of exclusive stuff over there. A lot of not safe for work stuff as well. <laughs> if you want to check that out. Apparently YouTube doesn't like me showing how to paint ding dongs and anime tay tay. So yeah, might as well check that out too. Now, I think all of you know by now that producing a video for my channel is somewhat difficult to do in a very, very limited time frame because of the nature of the hobby itself. And because it's just me with my two hands working, it's really not possible to bring out content at a much faster pace for you guys, even though I wish I could do it. But unfortunately, I am not like a lot of other YouTubers that can actually bring out content every week for you guys. I'm more into the category uh, where I fit into, but not am, one of the animation channels. Uh, you, you see that they bring out videos every month, every two months, maybe three, four, whatever time it takes them to actually finish a 10 to 15 minute video in animation. It's probably the equivalent when I do a figure because not only am I working on the figure, I am filming the process. And then after all that's done, I have dozens and dozens of hours to pick and choose in between cuts uh, to actually produce, edit the video. And yeah, we are here now. <laughs> and we all know that the mighty algorithm gods are not particularly fond of people not uploading that often. So I really appreciate all your support that you can give either through Patreon, super thanks, or the membership uh, channel now, or just sharing, liking and commenting on any or all of my videos. Uh, it helps a ton and you have no idea how much it really does. Because that way, you know, even though I'm not uploading, YouTube is noticing that my subscribers, or in this case, you that maybe are not subscribed, that are part of the 70% of people that are not subscribed to my channel, uh, are interacting with my videos. So that helps a lot as well. So with that out of the way, let's finish this party with a bang and... 
let's get started. As always, we start by cleaning the kit with some purple power to remove any mold release left from the casting. Now right off the bat, I can tell that this kit will be a nightmare just by looking at the parts. The damn sculptor did, or should I say didn't do, the only job that they were supposed to do, which was making a good goddamn kit by adding goddamn connection keys to the parts. Just, just look at this. What? How the fuck am I supposed to work with this? I'm just pinning the parts that can be easily pinned, but the rest of the pieces that have absolutely no way of connecting them to the body, we'll, we'll deal with that in a bit. I mean, not to mention the head. I fucking hate it when they sculpt the head onto the hair. Now I'm left with an awkward huge ass piece to work with. I can't even drill through the head to pin to the body because my goddamn Dremel just can't fit through the, <laughs> through the hair. What the hell? And just because of that little detail, I had to actually buy a long ass six inch drill bit to be able to reach where I want to pin. <laughs> Whoa, 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 too, too much power there. Uh, turn it down, turn it down. Okay, looks like this is gonna work. The drill is in, but it's still hard to try and align it to the body with the head. And honestly, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna deal with this later. It's too early for the shit. For now, I'm just gonna continue to prep the parts with putty, cause again, the sculptor did a shit ass job I'm also going to take this opportunity to make an adequate key connection onto her neck so that her head, you know, can connect to the rest of the body, which is kind of important, you know, to keep things together like that. Now the cast has a lot of uneven seam lines and I had to take my little mustard to fill in those problematic areas. And not only that, but to also help me make those connections that I carved earlier. I mean, I might as well do the whole goddamn kit from scratch at this point because I'm doing the sculptor's work and I ain't happy. But this is what happens when an amateur sculptor does a kit. This is a great example of how not to do things.
Unfortunately, part of the hair did break and I needed to do a little bit of repairing here, taking a very small pin with some glue and putty to fix that little issue. The dress does have this large gap here, so I'm also going to add some more mustard to fix that. Plus, create a damn connection key to this because, you know, it's supposed to attach to the body and without this, you can't really fucking do it. This is the part of the hobby that really gets annoying when working with old kids. Some of them are extremely poorly thought for the painter compared to recent or newer kits. This is basically just subpar quality, but since you like this kit so much, there's really not much you can do but to fix it yourself, and having this small headache will save you 20 down the line. All right, let's get back to the neck connection. I need to redo the pin, but my Dremel was still not reaching that straight line to get the pin in there. And at this point, I took my heat gun and basically said, fuck it, let's bend the shit out of that with some hot air and drill it in. And once I'm done, I can just bend it back to the original shape. Sometimes thinking outside the box is essential for you to advance in your progress. Years of working with kids have given me this insight into knowing how to work around with the shit you got. And to create those connection keys, I literally printed out some pegs to help me with that task. I used to do it with some polystyrene rods, but it was a bitch to glue in. UV resin is 100 times better and faster to work when doing these mods because it would have taken hours for the glue to dry when doing the polystyrene pegs because that only sticks with plastic cement to itself and it takes way longer to fix it with the regular glue to something else. Once the shape of the keys were carved out, it's just a matter of filling with putty to get a tight fit on everything. Even though all these changes won't be visible, this is very important for a figure's stability. I had so many of my first kits fall apart with time because of how poorly I painted them and I know where this could end up if I don't do this. It's all about stability for the years to come.
Also, did I mention that the wonderful sculptor didn't include the goddamn laced goals over her sleeves and neck? The audacity. I'm gonna have to try my hat at sculpting this shit from scratch now. <laughs> what fun! This is gonna take a little bit of trial and error. I managed to figure it out, <laughs> pun intended, on how to pull that off. Even if the necklace breaks, I could just go back, glue it together, and reinforce it with more putty. Like I said, trial and error. Also, I'm lazy. Having the rough shape down, now I can go in and detail it to try and make it look kind of part of the style. It's not going to be 100% true to it, but it's going to be close enough, which is, I guess, fine at this point. With the mods done, now I can go in and sand off whatever the fuck was left behind of my sanity. The laces for her arms and the bust area also didn't have any way to connect them, so, so I am basically going to add very, very tiny pins and hope for the best. I also had to heat bend them to shape because they honestly didn't want to fit onto where they're supposed to go. And after a light layer of primer from off camera, I can go back and see how badly I sanded the shit down and re-sand and polish all these areas because I suck at this.
The tail for her dress also needs some more detailing by opening up those little holes on the edge of the feathery lace and not to mention sand all in between those holes that are now visible thanks to Mr. Primer Coon. And to finish off this stage, fill in tiny surface air bubbles with some light curing putty. Alright, let's get some color on this girl. When the sanding is finished, always remember to reapply primer to the areas that you sand it off. For this kit, I'm going to do a white base for the skin and any other areas that will have a light color. The rest can have a gray primer on them. I'm doing a black base for the outfit, but I will do several different effects to give it more texture and more dimension to it, not just leave it black. The ribbon pieces are supposed to be gold, and I thought of doing a satin candy-ish effect to make it look like silk by doing a silver chrome and then build up layers with a clear color on top. But I guess the paint had a bad reaction to it. I don't know what happened here, but I was able to get a better result by letting the chrome dry overnight. But I was just not vibing this color. It looked like metallic yellow instead of gold. So I changed my mind and tried a different approach by using Vallejo's liquid gold on it, which honestly it looked way better for what I wanted. So I'm keeping it. I'm using the same skin tone paint that I used for the previous two kits, which was Mr. Hobby Lashiva's Orange.
And for the hair, I'm doing a very, very light yellow for the base color and then using Radone or Radone, I don't know how the fuck you pronounce that, to do the blonde brownish hair she's known for. But I am leaving the larger hair piece for later because I need to paint the face before I get to the point of painting that big ass chunk of hair. Once I did matte black for the lace, I applied some color shifting paint and dry brushed it because I wanted to give it a nice effect to contrast against the gloss black that the rest of the outfit will have later. While the kit is pretty simple in design, I still can't let it slide with no pastels. So I'm taking to adding those finishing shadings on her to accentuate little areas just a bit more. I usually leave the eyes for last, but I really can't do that with this kit because I need to actually paint the face first before I can finish painting the hair. Learning from Sumomo in the last video, I did do something similar, but this time I outlined the irises of the eyes so that I can have a clearer area to mask off.
While the white part is lacquer and the paint I'm using to do the outline is acrylic, for some reason Windex wasn't working to rub off and do a thinner line to help me with the outline. Thus, I decided to scrape it off with my X-Acto knife. This is by no means something I recommend doing yourself if you don't know how much pressure to place on the knife. In fact, don't do it. I will not be held responsible for your fuck-ups if you decide to do it and it doesn't work for you. After that was done, I masked around with liquid masking and then finished covering with some sticky tack. I always have leftover paint from previous projects and I had the exact colors I needed for the eye gradient and I'm happy to use it instead of letting it dry out. Going back to paint the rest of her outfit, I want to give her, like I said, a glossy finish to that black. While you can add highlights to it, this time I went with giving her some iridescent effects with Mr. Crystal Clear Color. It doesn't look that great when applied, it's only when you apply a good two layers of gloss varnish to actually bring out the effect on the paint itself. And when the face was done, I can finally finish off painting the hair. Add pastels to that hair. And finally, some peel prawn for your pleasure.
We're coming to the end and that means taking care of details. I did mask her little Persicom ears off camera and just did a glossy finish to them, same as Chi. While the eyes did came out better than the last video, there were still some slight areas that needed some more sharpness. And that's why I came in manually with my brush to define those lines just a bit more. You gloss them out to make them pretty. And finally, removing that connection line between the bangs and the hair to make it look like a single piece. All right, now some of you have asked me why I don't do this in the prep stage, and I thought the reason was pretty clear enough. But if you're still not sure why, it's basically because painting the face would have been close to impossible with the bangs in the way. You might be used to this with American Garage Kids, having the hair and the face fused together. But this is where I feel Japanese kids are superior to those kids because it gives you ample space to detail the shit out of it with ease. Now, this is just my personal opinion, of course. You don't need to get your panties in a twist if you don't agree with it, okay? You can keep your American kits. I will stay with the Japanese ones. Thank you. For the base, I really didn't have a lot of imagination to make one. I just decided to make a communal base for the three kits themed after the empty city. I designed these little pedestals while I was in recovery, and since I really didn't have anything else to do except watch anime and play some Bayonetta 2, this was all I could muster. Chi's base was half done, and I made sure to make her pedestal in a way that the original one could fit into the middle of the two and blend in. I personally have misophonia and I can't stand ASMR videos, but I know you sick puppies like it, so here's a little bit of your so-called tingle stimulation. Now I hope you enjoyed that because that's going to be the only time you will ever get anything ASMR from me. I hate to work in silence and I'm always blasting music or videos in the background and that's all my footage has recorded so you're <laughs> fresh out of luck with that. Once printed, I brought out cheese base and cut some holes so that the LED lights could pass through the two bases. And of course, with anything that I print out, I have to spend a ridiculous amount of time sanding all the print layers. I'm just glad these are all geometric shapes and it's easy to sand. Tedious, but nonetheless, still easy. To blend Chi's base with the other two, I just extended the brick design she originally had in the kit she came with. And that will work as a cap. That way I can remove it to turn on the lights. Music 
Add a little Mod Podge to help the primer stick to the foam board and just paint it. Since the printed bases still have a slight print layer to them, I'm just going to use some literal primer filler. I rarely use it because it fills in details, but for this it's actually pretty versatile in helping you get a smooth surface. Wow, look at all these amazing monkeys over on my Patreon! Would you like your name to appear here, immortalized in one of my videos? Then consider becoming a patron! We have a very nice little private Discord server where we have monthly meetups between me and my lovely patrons where they also get to enjoy exclusive content and behind the scenes and updates on special projects. And I want to give out a special shout out, particularly to my VIP monkeys. Sugar Miller, Althina, Noko, Mistaria, K. Almir, Mary Cooper, Neremus, Damis, C. Pony Sarah, Aisha Lee, Grim Thanatos, Alexandra Matheny, Fiore Lily, Euphemism, Sage Rosado, Thymeria Townsend, Mandy Gordon, S.K. Lamfer, Meg Scrabble, Rini B. Maverick 107, Clear Lonely Jellyfish, Kiki, Cannoli Rose, Nikki, Fake It Till You Make It Mom, Blah, Ishmi, Katsy, I Muse, Chasse Valani, Evelyn Cole, Amagon Rosh, and Laura Chan. You guys are my MVPs, and there's not a single day that doesn't go by that I don't appreciate your support. I also didn't want to continue with the masking, so I said fuck this shit and just brought out my hand brushes to do it manually. No. We'll do it live! <laughs> fuck it! And while the light will illuminate the stars and the windows from the inside of the bases, I still wanted to add more twinkle to it and added some holographic star glitter to make it pop even more. Also, because when I removed the liquid masking, I kind of took a little bit of paint from Atashi's ear and I, <laughs> I didn't want to repaint it, so these little stars are great to hide those mistakes. And with that, the base is done. Working with Freya was not an easy task at all. Mostly due to her having almost absolutely no connections at all and me having to actually do the work that the sculptor was supposed to do at this point. While most kits today are really, really well done, a lot of these old kits are not and they leave a lot to desire. A lot of these kits were made by amateur sculptors and many of them don't really paint or didn't really paint so they didn't really think of 
making the kit uh, with the painter in mind. They just wanted to do the figure and be done with it. So this is what we have in, in this case for very, very old kits, which is, you know, uh, something that happens with most of them. Still, I think this was a great opportunity to show you guys that even though kits, you know, old, old kits like these, tend to require more work, I think we can still improve on them to be able to work with them more comfortably. Even though you're not gonna see the improvements in the actual figure once finished, those improvements save you from a lot of headaches when working with the actual pieces. My actual collection consists mainly of older kits. I would say only 20% of my collection consists of recent well-done kits. So this is pretty common in older kits and it's something that I'm accustomed to. And speaking of collections, I want to take this moment and put something out there that's been giving me so much anxiety over the last few months. And it's something that I want to address right now. I know I put out a video at the beginning of the year as a form of trailer for the upcoming projects that I was gonna work on this year. Unfortunately, I think this is one of the times where I have to admit that I probably, <laughs> most likely, um, got a little too ambitious and I didn't really plan or thought of uh, some things that might come in between my work pace. Some of them being uh, catching the COVID bug, uh, another one was actual freaking surgery, uh, which I honestly did not plan on having this year, um, but it came and I took it and here I am. And the other one was that I honestly did not think that working on the last unicorn kit was gonna take so much of my time. I originally was going to make that project as a personal project, but there was a lot of interest from a lot of different people out there on the internet and I decided to actually produce my first garage kit. So yeah, this is where I am right now and I want to take this moment to apologize to the people that got really hyped and thought they, they were probably going to, you know, see me work on maybe one of their favorite kits or figures. And I really want to apologize. I feel really bad for letting you guys down. Um, I, I guess it's not uh, prudent to the, the put out such videos at the beginning of the year. <laughs> this is not a very predictable hobby where you can say, yes, I'm going to paint so many kits a year and do it because there are a lot of things that could get in the way of that. So yeah, that is the thing, the elephant in the room that I wanted to address right now. Well, that might be disappointing for a lot of you. And again, I'm really sorry. I really can actually tell you that I can guarantee two uh, videos before the year ends because these are the two projects, the two main projects that I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Uh, and they will be out before the year end, which is Princess Jupiter. And uh, the other one that I am doing that I will finish before the year ends is the last unicorn kit. Again, this is a kit that I produced that I teamed up with a digital sculptor. Her name is Lou. And uh, you can follow her here if you want uh, to catch up on her work. Uh, me and her, we teamed up for this project and yeah. I, I need to finish it. <laughs> I need to finish it before the year ends. And if I have time to include um, another kit in the lineup before the year ends, I will include it. But for now, the two guaranteed videos that I can give you right now as my word of honor, Princess Jupiter and uh, Lady Amalthea and her unicorn version. Still, I hope you can follow me on any or all my social media to get updates on those projects and, you know, another one if I have time for that. Although I will start posting more in the community section or in the community tab because I know a lot of you don't have social media for some reason and that's completely fine. So I think going over to the community tab and updating all you guys on my little projects is going to be very helpful for a lot of you. And with all that said, I hope you enjoyed Freya's process and again, I am really, really sorry. I won't do it again. 
I promise. So for now, I want to show you guys the end result to this mini series of three videos that I've been doing for the Chobit's 20th anniversary celebration. If this is your first time watching uh, this video, be sure to check out my previous two in the series where I paint Chi and Sumomo. Remember to hit that like button, smash that subscribe button, and click the bell icon to get notifications on all my future content and videos. But for now, I'll see you in the next one.